Hello everybody, welcome to the second final phase match. We have got uh, manager one, which is Ben Bo Baggins, coming from the losers bracket up against Smiles O in red with it from the winners bracket. Uh, Smiles O has gone for the 12th player, which is a comedian skink, which he shouldn't have started on defense. And uh, obviously two rerolls and an apo. And then Ben Bo Baggins has just gone for three rerolls. And an apple, so his is a bit, uh, his is a bit dicey, right? Having, in terms of removals, only having eleven players, but then a bit more reliable with dice rolls. Whereas uh, Smiles O's is a bit more robust with removals, but a bit dicier on dice rolls. So, like, you've got to pick your poison with lizards, really. There's no real way to uh, to do great on that result. And I think they've both just got full block, haven't they? Four, five, six. Six, yep, so we've both got full block teams. That's lovely, isn't it? So at the moment, on the pitch, Ben Bo Baggins' teams is just better, right? Because he's got he's got a normal skink instead of a chameleon skink. Just a mistake by uh, Smiles O. And, uh, and he's got plus one reroll. So as long as, uh, you know, as long as that doesn't... The removals don't come in thick and fast, then having the reroll is just better, isn't it? And then obviously in overtime, you might want to have the reroll or the player if it goes to overtime, which, you know, these games have got a good chance of going to overtime, right? Like, you know, mostly, well, everyone's got, you know, pretty much the same TV. The, the teams that have more TV have more TV because they're meant to have more TV because they're not very good teams. Um, lovely non-reroll there to try and trying to get on the guy that failed. Um... So, you know, so the teams that have got... Well, I'm not sure, I think you should have blitzed first, right? You should have blitzed first, and maybe even blocked first. You could have moved this skink over. Here we go, we'll pause it. This skink could have moved over here to cover if the... Uh, if the crocs went stupid, right? And then you could have moved that other skink over there after the blocks. I think he should have still made his blocks, especially as he wasn't going to re-roll that. Um, but yeah, like, you know, the, all the matches are broadly similar skill coaches, right? So... A lot of the games are going to be decided in overtime. It's uh, pretty much, and look, now he's given away a hit on his crocs that are hitting with it. I mean, that was bad. And because he hadn't hit that, that's allowed him to get that foothold in, and then start to try and bully the line back, knocking back the uh, crocs and stunning the other saurus. Like you know, that's literally put him on the back foot, just to attempt a three plus pickup that he wasn't going to re-roll. That's. Uh, I think if you go for that pickup before the blocks, you're re-rolling the pickup, right? Because it's because you really, really, really mega value the pickup. So he's really got himself into trouble here of his own his own making. So it keeps him out in front. Now he makes the pickup, but now he's gotta do two one Ds here. Nothing. And nothing. And now he's going to get three Saurus knocked over and another one blitzed. And he's he could, you know, well, hit, not knocked over. But he's getting four Saurus hit this turn. Maybe the procs. Kazd. So the apple comes in on an injury, 37.5% to work, doesn't work. Unlucky, but also, you know, it's a tough decision now. It's always a tough decision, isn't it? So, only gets a push there. So, yeah, you know, he, he didn't get four players knocked over, but he, he did get four players hit, and one was knocked over and Kaz. So, I guess you'll, I guess you'll take one knockdown from four blocks if it's a Kaz. <laughs> but you know, he, he got dominated through his own fault. And now it's hard from well, he can blitz this Saurus, right? He could have he could blitz this Saurus. I guess he's doing it with Crocs. Try and get a bit lucky. Problem is he's got no depth, right? So that he can get all of his oh, and he's also moved up the cage as well. Don't like this. He's going for a dodge off. Don't like that either. And. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It's funny because uh watched this live and joined from turn four. And, you know, didn't really know how it had happened. 
that Ben Ball Baggins was in a lot of trouble and it just all comes down to that first LOS where he didn't blitz and he didn't block with the Crocs. You know, he, he could have just blitzed the guy that was in front of the Crocs, but because he didn't clear that guy, it just allowed it allowed Smiles or to get a bit of a, a bit of a jump on him. And now all of a sudden, you know, that that four block turn yielded results with the cars. Waste his blitz. And yeah, and you know, he's got these three players he's just standing up to get punched down is and, and a cage it's off. Oh my god, you can't dodge that. I just think you can't dodge it. Like it's not fun, but at least you're using his actions. There was a two six hundred uh, Black Orc team in <laughs> in Blood Bowl three <laughs> in the second preseason. Bigger in, I think it was. The so three dicing a skink. I really like that. Just picking off that skink there, who's now coming out to dry. Three D with blocks. Pretty good odds of a knockdown, isn't it? Surprised he didn't base the other skink. Honestly, um, I quite like going all basing here. Smiles all like you're already up, you're basing the down Saurus, so you, you know he could have piled in everything, but he's staying conservative. Interesting, isn't it? It's interesting, like it's like this screen isn't so good against skinks anyway, right? And like it's it's tough, it's really tough to decide between like turning the screw or just uh you know, being safe, and we saw the Om Lord just being super safe, declining a a ball sack because he was being super safe or didn't see it. You know, that's an option that he didn't see it. But um, maybe he was just being super safe. But I mean, this is a very good, very good spot. Isn't it? You've got the. These should probably be an extra one back, right? Or even two back. Make a better grid to stop the skinks because you're not making the dodges harder, right? Like the elf screen is an elf screen because if you're a if you're a human, you're you're doing a five plus five plus four plus three plus. But a skink is just doing a three 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 three. So if you have these one back or two back, then you just make them do loads of threes. So we probably should have had. Um, at least one gap and maybe two gap here to be a bit safer to the uh, the, the old skink potato player because oh my god look at that <laughs> the crocs I mean he has been croc blitzing a fair bit here Ben Bo Baggins he's kind of had to right so he literally rolled a one in nine both downs then he got the loner oh no the loner failed okay i thought he'd done the loner i thought he'd actually done a one in nine so it was a one in nine loner fail and you know it's kind of fair enough right because he got himself into trouble got a bit of bad luck now he's just having to blitz with the blitz with the crocs every turn to try and you know get the mighty blow hits get a bit of luck back and also um you know he's just in a bad spot isn't he this is uh turn six now it was for him <laughs> yes, yes, do I? Yeah, like that's the thing, right? Like, but it's interesting. You see, it's interesting because I think, and anyway, we've got a two D on the ball here with a block. Gets the pow, the plim plum ball sack. And now we're pressing in with a ball on the floor. I really didn't like. That I remember, I remember not liking this. I remember I would have, uh, I would have wanted this Saurus to come out and the Crocs there, and then this guy won down. Um, but anyway, fails the pickup. It's in two tackle zones. It's it's a pretty strong position for Smiles or who's the Red Lizards. <laughs> Ben Bo Baggins is the blue lizard. As I blitz as that guy. One D's him away. And one D's him down. 
And you see that this, this Saurus isn't doing anything, right? If he'd had an extra player up there and an extra player here, this all gets harder. And he's away. He's, he's away. He's got a double G if I had to get into range. Because this is turn 7 now. And uh, shadowing does nothing. Maybe that guy should have GFI'd as well, right, to get in range. And look at this, he just rolls all the dice on all the dodges. I mean, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, there were so many dodges there. He did have dodge. But uh, <laughs> he rolled a pretty good turn there, didn't he? Four, five dodges with the guy with the ball. And then uh, just one dodge with that guy. And then three dodges with him. But, you know, like... There's a lot of dice rolls. He did have the two rerolls as well for it, right? So with dodge plus the rerolls, that turn wasn't even that unlikely. It's crazy. Crazy that that turn wasn't even that unlikely. And what a swing around. And now, all of a sudden, after not committing for all that time, smiles oh, he finally commits when he thinks he's got it won with the, after the ball sack. And uh, turns out he didn't. Because now, great, great turn by Ben Bobagnon, right? To sheet a play and do the play. And I guess we're going to... Try for a 2D on the ball, or, or just the 1D? Oh! <laughs> Knew what was coming. <laughs> he had a GFI to cancel the assist, <laughs> because he's movement 7. <laughs> and he just shouldn't have been on the pitch. He should not have been on the pitch. He should have been a movement 8 skink, who wouldn't have had the GFI, wouldn't have double one, wouldn't have died. There you go. So this is actually a nice move here. He, he run the uh, he run the Saurus round in front of the Skink in case he failed either of the GFIs to score, because there was like no, especially the second one, the end zone, right? The ball could have scattered to midfield or something, and then he could have skinked to skinked. So, um, yep, there you go. Well, no spliggy, because now is when you want to field it, right? Now is when you want to field it, trying the one turn. This is exactly why you bench him on defense, because now on on a one turn attempt. He's actually two squares faster than this guy, right? He's movement eight. He's essentially movement ten for the one turn. So he can just go to collect it. Maybe a free chance at catching it. He would have done, right? He would have gone one square up. He would have had a free chance at catching it. Might have done. This is a mistake here, by the way. Uh, this this one turn. It's just literally just starting on squares, right? There was there was no there was no reason for him to not start there. So he just literally just started him in the wrong square. And had he not moved this guy, he could have done the one turn, but uh, he he messed it up. Hello, Satterfield. So he does this. He did. He could have done that one D as well. Like after he realised he messed it up, he could have just done it one D. Uh, because this is the thing, right? You do this hit and you do this hit. But now the problem is, how on earth? Does he fill this square? <laughs> and it's with, like, he's got to, what, pow, pow him and then do a, a Saurus 6 plus dodge to fill that. Whereas if he'd, uh, if he had just started this play, the skink here, he could have come around, he could have 2D'd him and then the skink could have just done 1 3 plus dodge or it could have come around earlier or whatever. Like, so that was real bad that he did, uh, that he just set this guy up in the wrong square. Well, he set the other one up in the wrong square. He put this guy over there because he's going to come in and assist, I guess. But there was just no reason to not have a player there. So, you know, it's just a mistake, right? It's not the end of the world, is it? But um, a mistake it was. So now he just has to punch because he can't score the one turn. And it's sad because he had two rerolls, right? He would have had a decent chance at it. If he'd, uh, if he'd had that skin to do with dodge, could have pushed this guy to here, and then it would have been... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Double GFI handoff in the tackle zone. Not not ridiculous, right? And then a bunch of just about not three three pluses and two GFIs. Would have been totally doable. But um did mess up the setup. So pretty strong for Smiles or here, obviously. Um he is a player up on the field. There are only ten for Ben Bo Baggins. There are still eleven for Smiles or. Of course, Smiles can only win by going to overtime at this point. Oh, and now it's super strong because there's been a, there's been a skink sent off. So, you know, he is 1-0 down, so he can only win it up by overtime. And he's just pitched another the gun. Now it's super strong. It was it was looking pretty decent for Smiles, though, despite being 1-0 down. 
And now it's looking super strong, right? The Kaz from the ref, the Kaz from the block, and uh, yeah. See, unlike Benbo Baggins here, he makes all of his blocks before he attempts the pickup, which is correct. Very rare that you don't take all your blocks. You know, really, Benbo Baggins really should have done. So yeah, quite like this. Um, if you're going for a backfield pickup with Skinks, so that you know, if you fail a pickup, you've got three squares. And Benbo Baggins like moved one player back last last half in front who got the chance to scatter catch by moving all three back you've obviously got a great line versus uh, any skinks dodging through but also you know you've, you've got a bobble box like so if this was close to the line it would be terrible because you could pick it up here fail the catch there and it'd come out here or something but when it's backfield like this getting the three chances to scatter catch it is pretty good so i do like that um and obviously it picks it up without a reroll it's interesting because now uh, Smilesville really has to not spend rerolls on offense because he's got the value of his 12th man. So he's got that going for him, but he really, really, really needs to not use these rerolls on offense. And Ben Bobbins again with the dodges. I, I hate these constant Saurus dodges. He was doing it a lot in the first half when he was under pressure. He's doing a lot of half in the second half. It's a 5 plus. Very unlikely to succeed. And a 1 in 6 isn't ridiculous to get cast. Uh, well, not cast. Armor broken. And that's like, you know, that's, that's way too, way too likely. I don't know what it is to get cast. I mean, obviously, 1 in 36 once you fail. And you fail two thirds of the time. So it's pretty high, isn't it? High enough that you just shouldn't do it. Because he could have just laid on the floor. Like, this guy lying on the floor is fine. And he just hit again. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, Baron Bucky. But I didn't know how we started watching on turn four because they started early. Um, they had agreed to 9 UTC. And then uh, Smiles was like, oh, wait, no, I'm Italian. I didn't actually mean 9 UTC. <laughs> <laughs> so they started at like about half eight and then I started watching it about you know about nine and I was like what, what's going on so and funny enough watching this back from the start got to see how Ben Bob Baggins was in such a bad state on turn four um, it was of his own making to be honest got a lovely column here <laughs> for a big conga line of Bloxaurus lovely yeah, Ben Baggins' team names are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And there you go. And he's just blitzing with Mighty Blow every turn, right? Just trying to get lucky. That's totally valid. That's all he can do at this point, right? Three players down is, is absolutely brutal. Eight players max for the rest of the match. And he just keeps these... I hate these Soros dodges. I hate these Soros dodges, by the way. Like, the payoff is so minimal. And the danger is just so... It's unlikely, but it's just so massive, right? You can have a Soros die. And the payoff is you can have a Soros standing somewhere else. Like, you've got eight players already. Like, you just... You know. If your opponent had eight players and you had 11... Then, then it gets interesting, right? Because you having that Saurus stood somewhere else has got a lot of value. Then you probably just stand him up anyway. But it's just weird. I don't like it. Ah, oh, very good, Sarah. Just running away the skinks. I mean, you can go for like a late 1D, right? I, w I wouldn't have minded going for the 1D there, honestly. Like, and this guy could come through, couldn't he? Oh, he makes the cast, though. Maybe he can't go this way. So he did get lucky with his mighty blow hits. 
It was dead and uh, the app all failed. It was like a miss next. He app it and then it was dead. So, big cows from the crocs. I think he's doing the right thing, just trying to get lucky with the crocs at this point. Smashes him. Could have geified, couldn't he, to tag the other skink as well? Probably not worth it, but an interesting thought. I wonder how much he thought about it. Oof. Rox stays down. I don't think that was his blitz, though, was it? Now he's coming back to try and win this fight in the middle a little bit. All of a sudden, like, you know, if that Crocs had stood up, it would have been pretty good, wouldn't it? The Crocs could have, uh... The Crocs and the Saurus could have fought those three, and then these three could have fought these two, and then marginalised the other Crocs. So it could have been somewhat decent. But now we just go back to this side with the stupid Crocs. But we could see the ball sack next this turn, right? And he's got two skinks in the middle. This could definitely... Oh, well, they're both on a crocs, though. <laughs> Which isn't great. Um, yeah. And it takes that guy away from the crocs. So now the first thing you do is stand this guy up and move him over or base the crocs, depending on whether you think you can get these two guys off. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, hey. And then you can think about maybe going for the ball sack, or maybe just blitzing with Mighty Blow. And uh, blitzes with Mighty Blow. Four. Oh, glorious Baron Bucky. <laughs> Dimmy the Chan. So he makes his 4 plus dodge against Tail. And then he ends the turn and he missed this guy down. If we can uh, look around to his point of view, obviously he wasn't this far zoomed out, right? He must have been zoomed like this. This is kind of a level people play at. So if you zoom this level in this kind of you know, angle, he's just not going to see that guy laid down. So he missed. He missed that, and he could have based him and then dodged this guy away to come over, or he could have just, you know, moved, ran him across and left him, him on there, depending on what he wanted. So that's a bit, a bit tragic. Well, and then another Saurus gets KO'd for Ben Ball Baggins. Not ideal, but it, this isn't this isn't easy to do. With this Crocs is it? He just dodges. He just dodges four plus dodge from the Crocs. Huge. And you, so if you've got POW here, you would have had a free Saurus, but he only gets the push. So no free Saurus, has to dodge this skink as well. And obviously he's got to dodge this skink. Yeah. So he gets he gets away. And again, look, if he'd just been able to move this skink over to here. <laughs> um, we can still 1D it, right? This guy 1, 2. He could block first, because you know he's got to try and get lucky. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one D. So big ass to move him over to make it a two D. Oh, now he spotted this fella. At least he gets to punch the crocs, doesn't he? Which is all right. So this actually works out just the same as if he'd moved him over last turn. So he was trying for the two D, right? One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this guy could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he was trying for the 2D. Failed the first dodge. Which isn't too bad, right? Because he made a million dodges to score his touchdown. So he can't feel too sad about that. He will feel sad about this, however. <laughs> Like three dicing the skink that. Pretty, I mean you've got a three dice skinks with block to be fair. It doesn't bother making that last hit. I don't know if he had the movement, probably. 
But again, right, you need the two rerolls for overtime, so you really don't want to just make a pointless block. Skull out. And there's actually quite a few cars here. It's like, it's actually not bad, is it, on cars now? Um, though I guess this is nine versus seven. So it is a two man advantage. Um, this is a one turn for Ben Bobagans. I'm pretty sure there's no one turn here. Should have just set up for more damage. More Saurus blocks. And that KO is, <laughs> yeah, like that's that's the thing. You could have had you could have had another Saurus here, right? And uh, they could have all blocked, and then you could have blitzed another one. So he could have hit four. Instead, he's only hitting three. Well, he could have had like five, he could have had four blocks and he's only got three. Yeah, could have had he could have actually had yeah he could have actually got another block. So he he has made this block, but he could have had one extra one. Um, had he just set up to punch, which I think was more prudent. So here we go, overtime toss. Both got the uh, slam. And ben Bobaggins lose the toss. Only has seven players. KO comes back for Smilezo, so it is nine versus seven. <laughs> like it's not over. It isn't over um, for Ben Bobaggins. But obviously, seven people is um, is not great. But then nine isn't too many either, is it? Like you know, it's not as if it's seven versus eleven. But uh, yeah, Smarzo's got the cro got the Saurus advantage. So you can just three dice, a skink with block every single turn. So I think the play for Ben Bo Baggins is to just get his skinks. You know, like it's it's three skinks versus four skinks, right? So just get get. Oh my god, you could have, you could have a funny named team that's something to do with four skinks, couldn't you? Um, so, he, you've still got three and he's got four. And all the big guys can't dodge or anything. So, like, maybe just ignore the big guys and he's pulled back even further, right? So he's, like, he's he's pulling back out of range to stop, like, any one day or something. But he's splitting his team on purpose. So now you could, like, crocs blitz the other, the crocs and then just just come around, the si come around both sides. Or, or whatever, like something like that. He's pulled back the four skings. There you go. Very nice. Um, so yeah, like I think you have to just get your skinks in his backfield, and at least like force the issue a bit, right? Like it wouldn't feel good, but you know. <laughs> God. I mean, this is okay, right? This is pretty decent. Three dicing a skink with block. That's hard to pass up. So I understand doing that. But the problem is if like if you're just passing turns like this, it's you're not putting pressure on and you're just like getting attrition down basically. Like you're unlikely to win this. You're also unlikely to win if you put if you if you suicide your, your three skings forward. But I just prefer the more proactive you know, play in this kind of desperate situation. Versus a good opponent as well, right? Maybe versus ladder if it's somebody not very good at Blood Bowl. You know, being being super passive has got a lot more value. I think when people are good, you've got to roll the dice a bit more to get something good happen. He's going to go and get the extra block if he uh, doesn't get the knockdown, which is pretty good, isn't it? I think what he actually should have done was uh, blitz from here, though. So he could have pushed him there, so he'd have the assist, right? By hit blocking from here, if he pushes him, he'd have to bring in a skink to assist as well. Whereas if he'd hit it from there, he would have been able to push there, and then uh, he'd have already had the assist. Minor quibble, but there you go. Look, we've got a skink forward. And the other skinks are screened. So, like, this is okay. At least there's some threat, right? There's some chance of, like, a 1D by just just this one. This lone skink has done something. <laughs> what he's done is get three dice by block. <laughs> but he's taken two, two Saurus out of the fight, which is great, right? So, great value just from moving that one player. I'd like to have seen it earlier in the drive when there was less players to spare for Smilesor. 
Because now it's a pretty easy... Uh... This, uh... And now this doesn't really do anything, right? This, uh... This formation of Vengabus, as it's known. It doesn't really do anything versus Skinks, because it's just literally one dodge in to cancel all of the defensive assists, and then the other dodge in to hit. So, you know, I think you should go for a 1D on the ball here. I, like, I just think you have to. But... I'm looking at this as pretty desperate for Ben Bolt Vikings. And obviously he's... He's not. And, you know, he nearly got the Crocs in the ball. Oh, wow, he uses the reroll on a 4-plus to get the Crocs in. It's like, you know, he obviously doesn't see this as desperate as I see it, but... uh I see it as really desperate. But, you know, Crocs on the ball is, is always good. And it was a pretty good Crocs on the ball as well, because it would have taken, like, two dodges to move this skink around to clear the Crocs with a block. And I don't see any other way he's clearing the Crocs. So he's just going to go... Oh, he's just going to 1D blitz it. Wow. 1D blitz it, use the reroll, and got the both down. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. And got the AV break. <laughs> That was crazy. If he didn't get the AV break, you'd just instantly smash him on three dies. And now suddenly, it's like there's not an instant hit on the ball, is there? He'd have to block him and then... Uh... No, he doesn't even have to block, does he? He can just come around three, four, five, six, seven. So he's got a 1D on the ball. But he hasn't got a 2D on the ball. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, this is Saurus. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI, GFI. Okay, so he hasn't got a 2D on the ball. Oh, he dodged! No! Oh, no. Oh, no, Benbo Baggins. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI, GFI. This guy is not marked. That is a horrendous mistake. Horrendous. This isn't a screen. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI, GFI. Flip me. Oh, disaster. Like, if that was, if this was a screen, then I like the dodge off, right? Like, if if he couldn't have got this right, if this guy was over here or something, so it was screened on the side he was on, then I like, I like honestly, I like going for the 5+. plus. Like, I think you have to roll. It is a terrible spot. He has to roll dice. Um, like, it's a really terrible spot for him. The, the stun on the Crocs was just brutal. Um, but... He just had a he just had a two two to hit the ball. He didn't have to go for the five plus. It was just a mistake, isn't it? Everyone makes them. I might have not seen that live, <laughs> so you know I saw it there. But it is harder when you like you know you're playing live, right? But it's still a it's still a big mistake. So again, like now it's too late that like you can try a one D, I guess. The thing with a one D is you really want to roll a power, right? So by doing this, the six plus dodge in, then you, if you hit the six, then you've got two D with block, then you've got a decent chance to knock him over anyway, but I don't know. I think. Yeah, it was just a mistake. Just a mistake going for that 5 plus dodge. Didn't see the long run around. Maybe, I mean, you can't have wanted to keep him back in front if it, in case it went wrong, because if it goes wrong, you just lose, as evidenced by this. <laughs> But, you know, rough dice for Benbow Baggins, right? He did lose a lot of players. But, you know, he, he got some removals as well, right? He did the right thing, blitzing with the Crocs a lot to try and get removals. And got a few back. Got a somewhat lucky touchdown at the end. So, you know, just one of those games. The, the mis He made the mistake of not hitting the ball there, and he made the mistake of... In the first half, not taking all of his blocks, not clearing his lines. Not clearing his lines invited the pressure onto him. And then once the pressure was onto him, it gets pretty tricky. 
gets pretty tricky when you've got seven strength four and five guys in your face. I like this foul here. That's that's a good foul, right? Like th this skin can just one d you and stuff. So you might as well foul it. I actually couldn't one d him, but. Can't actually do anything. So he shouldn't have fouled him. It was a terrible foul in retrospect. <laughs> in retrospect, it was an absolutely terrible foul. He couldn't even. Oh, he could base him. I think he could have based him, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think he could have based him. And there you go. Um, it's 2 1. Two smiles, or there is the one turn attempt from Benbo Baggins, but. It's, you know, seven players, it's basically impossible. Probably has to set up for a quick snap, right? Probably has to put the, um... You have to put his skink here, so he could quick snap to there, and then he could block him forward with the first one somehow. Really difficult, though. Really, really difficult one turn. He, he, he would still... That's what he should have done, though. 100%, he should have, uh he should have set up for the one turn and then obviously quick snap as well um, so you know there was there was a chance there was a chance he could have done it but uh, but yeah not like he, he needed a quick snap or a timeout he, he, there was I'm sure there was no chance of doing it without either so there you go that is a win for Smiles or who goes through to the finals to join Diom Lord well, I can't. I can't keep saying who was already qualified because I'll forget. Joining Crystal Hunter and uh, Artemis in the final sixteen for the money goes Smiles or with the three 0 record. Very nice. Ben Bo Baggins unfortunately joins all the losers like me. And uh, Happy New Year, Azakus. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. And Happy New Year, everybody watching. This was this was done on New Year's Eve. <laughs> All right, tschüss.